familiar types, familiar gestures. Strong, subtle silhouettes with the validity of timeless symbols. These figures have been cut out of wrapping paper. There are 20 of them in all, arranged in a rhythmic sequence to form a panel five foot high and 60 foot wide. This serves as the plan for a decoration on the wall of a new building in Shantiniketan. In its final form, the cutouts will be replaced by colored tiles. The tiles have been manufactured in Purulia and sent to Shantiniketan in packing cases. Each piece of tile comes separately wrapped and numbered. They're first assembled on the floor like so many pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. While an assistant puts the tiles in position, the artist has to make sure that they have been properly placed. Vinod Bihari Mukherjee, who conceived the murals and cut out the figures, has been blind in one eye from birth. The other eye, which was severely myopic, he lost 15 years ago at the age of 53. Vinod Bihari has lived most of his life in Shantiniketan. He was away for a period of 10 years, but came back in 1958 as a member of the faculty teaching the theory of art. His wife teaches art in a school in Dehradun. His daughter, his only child, studies painting in Baroda. This is the first time both form and spacing is a blind man's space. Yogi to our kono jayaka hai tak shandha jayaka ki rakhao, chokya to bhala lagya na, chok bujo te hao, tumhe acta extreme te, acta solid portion glass jayaka te, shekin te tumhe khadu buli, shekin portion aashe. Your sensation will be quite different than your optical sensation. Apart from an hour or so on the site of the decoration, Binod Bihari spends most of his time alone in his cottage near the arts campus. The flask contains raw tea, his favorite drink, and has to be replenished from time to time by his maidservant. Before he lost his sight, Vinod Bihari had been an avid reader of books. But in his childhood, his formal education was greatly hampered by his physical handicap. If this photograph shows him with a book in his hand, it's probably because he belonged to a family which held education in high regard. It was a large family, and Binod was the youngest of six brothers. The one trait that most of the brothers shared was a natural gift for drawing. Binod Bihari's earliest surviving sketches show landscapes. He was still untaught. At the age of 15, he was permitted by a leading eye specialist of Calcutta to take up the study of painting. He had already, three years earlier, been sent to Shantiniketan as a student of Patabhavan. He now shifted to the newly opened Kalapavan. A year later, the painter Nandalal Bosch, the most gifted pupil of the great Abhaninganath Tagore, came from Calcutta and took charge of the department. A great teacher, as well as a great painter, Nandalal allowed his pupils to explore freely within the broadly defined limits of oriental art. Binod decided from the very outset that he had no use for mythology, that stock in trade of most of the new painters. He was more interested in his immediate surroundings. The starkly beautiful countryside around Shantiniketan, its flora and its fauna, and the sturdy life of the Santals in the villages, 
All these found expression in the sketches and paintings of Binod Bihari's early period. Because of his weak eyesight, small animals and birds could only be studied in a state of tameness or captivity. If some of his earliest paintings showed an influence of Nandalal Bosch, there were others which already revealed a marked individuality. The quality of high seriousness that marks this painting of a bridge had no precedent in Indian painting. The desolate beauty of the Shantiniketan countryside was caught in a magnificent scroll painted in the early 30s. of striking originality had appeared on the Indian scene. A painter with a deeply introspective, analytical turn of mind, aware of tradition, responsive to environment, and with sympathies extending beyond the limits of Oriental art. In 1937, while he was on the teaching staff at Shantiniketan, Binod Bihari visited Japan. He had developed a keen interest in certain aspects of Japanese art, in the intellectual discipline and subtlety of a painter like Sotatsu, for instance, or in the telling use of the Japanese brush in a painter like Toba Sojo of the 12th century. Soon after return from this very rewarding trip, Binod Bihari was assigned to paint a fresco on the ceiling of a new dormitory in Kalapavan. A painstaking process involving the use of earth colors and a highly controlled technique, fresco painting had been taken up enthusiastically by Nondalal and his students. Binod Behari had been familiar with a fragment of an Egyptian fresco which showed a pond surrounded by trees. Binod too put a pond in the middle of his composition. But around it, instead of just trees, he packed all of his 20 years of loving and meticulous observation of rural life around Shantiniketan and all of his effortless mastery of technique. A second fresco came two years later in the building known as Chinavavan. Here the theme was life in the campus itself. Instead of the free-flowing lyricism of the ceiling fresco, we have here a more austere composition in vertical segments. But the touches of humor and the marvelous observation of types and gestures are still there. A 
Among the most striking works of this middle period are some paintings and sketches done after a short trip to Benares. Once again, he succeeded in stripping his subject of all its superficial trappings and catching the essence beneath the surface. Binod Bihari was now 40 and at the height of his powers. He had persistently refused to let his creative urge be stifled by his impaired vision. And in Shantanikethan, one had got used to the sight of him hunched over his painting brush poised over paper for that sensitive precision of stroke that would set the seal of distinction upon it. His interest in calligraphy had led him to the Bengali script and this in turn had led to some finely distinctive book covers. The crowning achievement of the middle period came with a fresco in Hindi Bhavan, also in Shantiniketan. This time, Binod Bihari chose a religious theme, the saints and mystics of medieval India. Hundreds of studies and sketches preceded the actual painting of the fresco. Binod had studied the lives of the saints and had found that many of them had come from the lower strata of society. Kabir, for instance, was a weaver. Dadu, a cotton cleaner, Rabidas, a cobbler, Sena, a barber, and so on. In spite of their lowly origin, they had found faith and were able to instill faith in others, not through the preaching of exclusive religious doctrines, but through a simple philosophy of love and tolerance, which they practiced in their own lives and which came out in their songs and sayings. The only example of a truly epic conception in 20th century Indian art, the fresco occupies three walls of the central hall. The whole composition shows a remarkable cohesiveness. Saints and devotees, cities and mountains, rivers and trees and people, all fuse into an organic whole and make it a profoundly original and valid conception of the theme. There are resonances of other styles and other periods, but all the influences have been assimilated into a synthesis that bears the unmistakable hallmark of Binod Bihari Mukherjee. <laughs> As for its technical aspect, Binod Bihari's incredible confidence is revealed in the fact that the whole painting was done directly on the wall without the help of a preliminary tracing. In 1949, Binod Bihari left Shantiniketan for Nepal, where he had been offered the job of curatorship of the National Museum at Kathmandu. The novelty and richness of the scene had an immediate impact, and the place and the people were caught in a profusion of sketches and paintings.
It was a Nepalese scene that Binod Bihari depicted in a fresco in the Banasthali Vidyapit in Rajasthan. While in Nepal, the conviction had grown in Binod Bihari that the conventional distinction between fine arts and handicrafts was not a valid one and that teaching methods today should be modified to take this into account. He put this realization into practice in his own school, which he started in Missouri in 1953. When he didn't teach, he painted mountainscapes, seeking for the first time in his life to capture some of the fleeting aspects of nature. These were the last things he painted before, in 1957, Soon after an operation for cataract, he lost his sight forever. A lesser man might have crumbled under the impact of the tragedy. But Binod Bihari went on to prove that even for a visual artist, loss of sight need not mean the end of creation that there was an inner eye, an inner vision, born of long experience and deep devotion, which the artist could call upon to come to his aid, to guide his fingers.